I believe we can all agree that hatred is one of the most despised emotions on the planet, owing to the suffering and devastation it causes. But I also think in general it's a good structure for building tension in a story by generating the necessary conflict to propel the story to a satisfying end. And most importantly, it is the one fate from which the shinobi world never seems to be able to escape. Hatred has been described in many ways, but I think this is one of the best ways it has been described. Hatred is an intense negative emotional response towards certain people, things, or ideas, usually related to opposition or revulsion towards something, according to the textbook definition. When it comes to this topic, I believe it is appropriate to recognize perhaps the most hatred-driven character in all of fiction, which is a bold claim given that characters like Doflamingo from the One Piece series and Gonfrix from the Hunter Hunter series, and of course not forgetting Darth Vader from the Star Wars series, all these characters serve as examples and, well, they exist to challenge my statement. However, Sasuke remains one of the most tragic and misunderstood characters of all time, in my opinion. On the surface, his motivation appears to be simple. We fight, disagree, love, regret, and hate certain behaviors in ourselves. And sadly, we sometimes hate each other. These are feelings we invoke involuntarily on a daily basis, and so we sometimes forget the most basic parts of our nature. And thus, when a character's motivation is love, joy, or hatred, we fail to see the bigger picture that the writer is attempting to show us. Rather, with a shift in perception, we can see the amount of care and time Kishimoto put into creating this character. And I have to say, it is quite phenomenal. And it cannot be found in plain sight. Because as I previously stated, it appears to be nothing new in comparison to the rest of the shinobi world, a system ruled by hate and malice. While it could be argued that hatred is not an emotion but rather a motivation, for the purposes of this discussion, we will recognize it as both because it is quite subjective. Others have described it as it being based on perceptions of a stable or negative disposition of persons or groups. We hate persons and groups more because of who they are than because of what they do. Hate has the goal to eliminate its target. The ghost of the Uchiha himself once said, when a man learns to love, he must bear the risk of hatred. Now it is beyond my ability to simplify this complex phenomenon because as I previously stated, it is quite subjective. But first, let's look at what it meant for Sasuke Uchiha. Mikoto and Fugaku Uchiha's second and youngest son is Sasuke. They named him after Sasuke Sarutobi in the hopes that he will one day be as powerful as the third Okage's father. Sasuke grew up in the shadow of his older brother, Itachi, a natural prodigy to whom many in the Uchiha clan in the village constantly compared Sasuke and his achievements. Sasuke adored Itachi and never missed an opportunity to spend time with him. Although Itachi welcomed his company, allowing Sasuke to watch him train and accompanying him on forest adventures, Itachi rarely helped Sasuke become a better shinobi himself. When asked, he would often instead poke Sasuke's forehead and promise to do so another time. Now, as we all know, Itachi played a significant role in shaping Sasuke's character. His hatred and obsessive desire for power were all a result of his brother's desire to protect him. However, this was a misguided form of love. Rather than being born from a genuine place, it was created by Danzo in fear, desperation, and anguish. Although in his defense, the line between love and hate is quite thin. It would not be a stretch to assume that Sasuke was loved by his parents, but it is no secret that his father preferred to spend his time praising Itachi rather than actually getting to know him. Despite the fact that this very action was what pushed him to better himself and develop an identity of his own, he was still just a boy who needed a father and not a master. The Uchiha expected perfection and nothing less. Everything was second, nothing was above the clan. And Sasuke was no exception to this rule. He was to be just as good as Itachi. Now, on the surface, this was normal in the shinobi world, with the Hyuga and even villages like the Hidden Mist holding similar values. But as a clan known for their great emotional drive, this was a quality unique to them. The prejudice they received after all, unlike the Hyuga, made it clear that in the case of a dispute between them and the village, no one would actually come to their rescue. So this idea was necessary. Pride and power, but also love. And when this love was taken away, it would leave a bitter taste of hate and turn them into beings of absolute power and evil. 
Because of this, I sometimes wonder if the events of that night had not occurred. Would Sasuke have been saved from a fate of darkness and loneliness or was it inescapable due to the clan's identity and nature? Perhaps this was the beginning of his quest for power, but I truly don't believe so. He was simply a child seeking his father's approval, which he obtained, but sadly only for a short time. In his early years, he was naive and saw the world through a thin lens. The struggles of segregation that his clan was experiencing had never been of concern to him because he was only a child. But it was because of this that Itachi felt compelled to protect him, because their father was more interested in raising powerful shinobi. At such a young age, Itachi felt compelled to step up and become the father figure, ultimately forgetting he was a child himself and treating Sasuke like an infant. As Madara Uchiha said, these would be Itachi's first steps in preparing Sasuke for his journey down the path of darkness and by far his greatest regret. Some time after Kurama's rampage within the Hidden Leaf, suspicion of the mastermind of this event fell on the Uchiha and they were hated even more than before. And instead of mediating the situation, Hiruzen allowed it to deteriorate to the point of no return, giving Danzo incentive to act as he saw fit. When given the choice between his clan and the village, it was Itachi's love for his brother that triumphed. Danzo Shimura recognized that the Uchiha clan's survival was no longer a possibility. He explained this to Itachi and gave him the option of supporting the Uchiha coup and having the entire clan, including Sasuke, killed in the ensuing conflict, or accepting the assignment to wipe out the clan before the coup began and being allowed to spare Sasuke, this of course being a false dilemma. Itachi went with his brother. Despite having made his decision, Itachi was plagued by guilt, especially knowing that Shisui would most likely not forgive him for destroying the clan. However, remembering his father's words to not let others make decisions for him in life, while ironically disregarding his own brother's right to make his own decisions. Sasuke returned home one night after a long day of training to find the streets littered with the bodies of the Uchiha. He rushed home to inform his family of the Uchiha clan massacre, only to find Itachi standing over their parents' bodies. Itachi responded by using Tsukiyomi on him to torment him with visions of him murdering their family when Sasuke tried to seek help and comfort from him. Sasuke, horrified by Itachi's actions, begged for an explanation, to which Itachi replied that it was to test his own power. Sasuke attempted to flee, fearful that he would be next. Itachi cornered him and explained that Sasuke as he was at the time was not worth killing. Only by growing in strength, such as by acquiring his own Mangekyo Sharingan, could he pose a worthy challenge to Itachi's abilities. Before leaving, Itachi encouraged Sasuke to absolutely hate him, desire vengeance, and gain power as a result. Sasuke immediately pursued Itachi and attacked him with his newly awakened Sharingan. The attack failed and Sasuke passed out but not before seeing Itachi cry. For many years, Sasuke would forget this had happened. Now the Sharingan is a power that raises a lot of concern because of its nature. To attain power as an Uchiha requires one to experience great loss or immense feelings of conviction to protect what they love. But in that crucial moment, when a person unlocks their Mangekyo Sharingan, they are plagued with feelings of hate. And in order to get even stronger, the eyes require the user to feed them pain and become an ally of the darkness within and around them, basically giving them the ability to see better in the dark. The immense feelings to protect can easily be turned to feelings of destruction. Hence, the amount of people who unlock the eye's abilities through the sheer will to protect is practically non-existent. Itachi urged Sasuke to feed on hate while he himself never went down that route. As a matter of fact, what gave him power was his desire to protect Sasuke and the leaf. Maybe in his eyes, he saw the two to be similar because the desire to gain vengeance for those you hold dear can be seen as an act of love and not hate. But yet again, as I said before, the line separating them is quite thin. Or as Nagato put it, vengeance disguised as justice. I truly believe this is where it all began. Itachi devised a plan that would eventually destroy Sasuke. He cared so much about his brother's safety that he didn't mind manipulating him. Sasuke would become the most powerful shinobi in the Leaf and kill the man responsible for the Uchiha clan massacre and he would become the Leaf's hero. Or so he hoped. Whoever fights monsters should see to it that in the process he does not become a monster. And if you gaze long enough into an abyss, the abyss will gaze back into you. Itachi had encouraged and urged his brother to hate and despise him in every way, but he had left his brother defenseless against the possibility of becoming a true monster born in fear. Itachi had chosen the path he had taken, so his descent was under his control. However, for Sasuke, who had been thrust into this role, this would be something he had no control over, 
and their beasts would slowly devour him, and the monster would become the person. And down the line as the story progressed, I believe that all the kindness and hope that Sasuke had lost was stored in Naruto, and he acted as a vessel. As long as he existed with every encounter Sasuke had with him, he saw a shred of himself and it infuriated him because he wanted to abandon his humanity and trade it all for the power to kill the one he hated the most. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. After the massacre, he was put under the tutelage of Kakashi, and the time he spent with Team 7 and the lessons Kakashi had taught him made him think that maybe there was another way he could obtain the power he needed. However, Itachi reminded him of just how weak he was and taunted him to hate him even more. At that point, Sasuke had completely resolved to abandoning everything he had acquired up to that moment. And seeing Naruto, the one who was always behind him and following him finally begin to gain more power than him was enough to push him past the threshold. Now the dynamic between Naruto and Sasuke for the longest time has been something that most of us have downplayed and sometimes we've made fun of it. We see Naruto and Sasuke and instantly we judge their relationship as Naruto just being obsessive over a kid who never actually liked his guts but this is a relationship that could be called the cure to Sasuke's hatred. No one understood Sasuke like Naruto because during a time when Naruto was feared and alone with no real friends, Sasuke alongside Shikamaru was the one who treated him like a person, not hating his guts because of the nine-tailed demon but rather because he was just an annoying kid. Contrary to belief, it doesn't necessarily mean they were friends but the difference is that these two never treated Naruto like something to be hated because of what, what he carried within him, but they just simply had their own opinions of him based off what they saw and based off who he was as a person. Now as cliche as it might sound, the key word being kid, not orphan or jinchuriki as the rest of the village viewed him. While everyone saw them as the child prodigy and cursed child, in each other's eyes they were merely kids with goals they wanted to achieve, both set on a path of hatred carrying symbols to mark them for life and serve as reminders of what they had lost. At that time, they had only gained enough confidence to show each other their deepest scars. Naruto could never abandon Sasuke because he had projected himself onto him and abandoning him would have meant abandoning himself. In their first battle at the Valley of the End, Naruto would bring this up and tell Sasuke just how much he looked up to him and how he would bring him back even if it meant breaking his legs. What that battle signified was the beginning of the end of the naivete that Sasuke held concerning his ability to choose. This would be the turning point in which Sasuke would decide to accept the role that Itachi had chosen for him. And in order to do so, he would learn from a person who truly became a monster, both in mind and body. A person who had completely lost his humanity. A monster that felt no compassion and ate children. A monster that many feared much like the ones found in storybooks. Orochimaru, unlike Itachi, chose to be a monster not to face his most primitive instincts or because the choice was made for him, but rather to satisfy and feed his fear of death. And he had committed every evil act under the sun. Those who gazed into his eyes saw hell itself, as portrayed when he first showed us his true face while fighting his former teacher. As he began to laugh while possessing the body of a young girl, that scene was enough to send chills down my spine. This man had no compassion for the people who followed him, but instead viewed them as tools to be used for his own purposes, a means to an end. Cold, with a lack of sympathy or remorse. The decision to leave the leaf for Sasuke was by far the best he could have made, but it was also the worst. The positive impact, and I say this in the most sarcastic way, was that he spared the people around him from witnessing his descent into darkness. But the downside was that he had still been wandering with one goal in mind, and this in turn continued to devour him, and as he stayed by Orochimaru's side, it would eventually leave him far worse than it had left Orochimaru. Everyone carries a shadow, and the less it is embodied in the individual's conscious life, the blacker and denser it is. At all counts of, it forms an unconscious snag, thwarting all most well-meant intentions. Carl Jung describes the shadow as the inner part of our psyche that we deny exists. It is the part of us that puts us on par with horrible entities like the devil himself, the unknown darkness within. For some, it manifests itself unwillingly, and for some, they bring it out into the light to defeat it and become stronger or better versions of themselves. To fight a monster, he decided to become one, but still under Itachi's will and not his own. 
and it eventually made sense when he told Naruto during their battle that it was too late for him to go back. Either accept his transformation into a monster as Itachi wanted or continue to deny it and be devoured by it unwillingly, allowing Orochimaru to have his way. The decision, no matter how little choice he had, had to be made. But the consequences were disastrous. Itachi believed that by making Sasuke hate him, he would give him motivation to become stronger, but he failed to account for the self-harm it would cause the young Uchiha. When we first met Sasuke, he appeared to be almost stoic and in control of all aspects of his life. But that was only on the surface. Deep down, he questioned his own ability, not forgetting that because of his brother's success and great skill, he was considered second in the eyes of their father, which added to his inferior disposition. So all the hatred meant for Itachi had been directed toward himself, and he saw himself as weak and overly reliant on outside help. So rather than seeing strength in teamwork, he saw it as weakness. And these feelings, of course, would never surface. And this eventually led to this path. And it was truly too late for him to turn back. By denying the worst in yourself, you prevent the possibility of the best. And dare I say, even Itachi had not anticipated the path he had chosen. The truth is that not even someone as powerful as Orochimaru could face his shadow. In his case, it was facing his own mortality. And as a result, he withdrew himself much like Sasuke and it eventually manifested itself in the worst way possible, with his inhumane experiments to gain the power he needed to, well, live forever. Even the third Okage remarked that if only he had paid more attention to him. When Orochima replaced the curse mark on Sasuke, I believe it was simply a symbol of what was initially lurking beneath the surface. This mark would allow him to access his true strength and take on the form of a monster. Of course, I believe this was also symbolic. Kishimoto's way of showing us how far Sasuke had gone, and how little choice he was given in his own descent. Because even Orochimaru saw no point in giving him a choice. Now, I previously stated that Sasuke had involuntarily transformed into a monster, implying that he should have voluntarily transformed into one. But that makes no sense. Why would he have done something like that? Why not avoid that path entirely? To put it simply, when a person confronts their shadow, they gain the ability to be greater than they were before. If he had willingly become a monster, which is to say if he had become more articulate with the goals he had in mind, he would have risen above Itachi's will and his own desire for vengeance, much like Kakashi and Shikamaru. There is a famous saying that supports this realm of thought. A dangerous man carries a sheath sword, knows how to use it, but chooses not to use it. Simply put, Strength is found in those who are aware of their ability to destroy, but choose not to. Sasuke had to accept what happened that night. I'm not saying he had to forget about it, rather the opposite. He should have spoken about it and shared his pain with others. He should have brought it out into the open and stripped it of all its power. Instead, he kept it hidden, and it grew stronger. His unwillingness to face the bloodlust, self-doubt, and hatred that grew within him simply gave rise to the falsehood that he was justified in his actions because he had been wronged, and thus he had to do whatever it took, even if it meant hurting others, to right that wrong. This line of thinking aligns with weak-natured people. Mind you, weak-natured and not vulnerable, there's quite a difference. To face the part of you that could possibly destroy everything is dangerous when it is not guided by good intent, and you risk being devoured by the abyss, and Sasuke had been forced to look into that abyss by a person he once adored, which truly shows just how tragic of a life he had. Those of shinobi who had warned Sasuke of this, the man who lost everything, Kakashi. Kakashi had warned Sasuke about his pursuit for vengeance as it had devoured him too at some point and he would have turned out the same if it had not been for the intervention of Minato and his own self-reflecting attitude which led him to question himself. Hatred and vengeance have only one destination, the grave. Just as Shikaku told Shikamaru. Now when you become a monster, you know how monsters look and you cannot be fooled or devoured by them. After the time skip, Orochimaru had been deceived by his own hunger for power. After training Sasuke in his ways, he believed that he could steal his body because, unlike Itachi, he believed Sasuke was a defenseless little bird. Of course, this was his undoing. Because the young Uchiha had truly learned what a monster's face that's born in fear looked like. And with this newfound power and knowledge, he was finally ready to confront his object of hatred and his reason for living. Now, Kishimoto appears to have a unique way of communicating the emotional atmosphere of certain scenes through their various battle sequences. With Obito and Kakashi, it's nostalgia filled with regret and pain. With Sasuke and Itachi, it's deceit, regret and anger. 
it could be argued that he was justified in pursuing all of his goals, but Itachi's plan was far too cruel. He orchestrated his brother's entire life, planned his own death by his hand, and were of the little love he had left for him. And to top it all off, when the truth was revealed, Sasuke had to live with the fact that he murdered his own brother. When Itachi's plan is realized, the question is raised. What happens after Sasuke succeeds and kills him? Much like their battle which was full of genjutsu and deception, Itachi was clearly not done twisting his brother's fate, even after death, as he had planned ahead of time to use Kotoa Matsukami on him to manipulate his will into protecting the village, the very village that led to the annihilation of his entire clan, forced his brother to murder his own parents, and then turned him into a criminal. I call this false redemption because Sasuke was oblivious to reality, rather than redeeming himself. In a scene following that epic battle, a moment stands out in which I looked into Sasuke's eyes and saw an individual who had truly been immersed in darkness and had become truly alone with Itachi's death. Was this the intent that Itachi held? To leave Sasuke empty with no sign of humanity within him and simply a puppet to be manipulated? Now it's not surprising that the truth was enough to manipulate him. After all, Madara had a unique theory. It's easier to manipulate people when they are blinded by hate. A statement that holds true even in real life. I believe you can safely assume that Itachi's mistakes have been addressed, and what he could have done differently is made clear. But the answer to what was next for Sasuke was also clear. He needed to find a new object for his hatred, or he would lose all meaning. Danzo and the Leaf fit the bill for such a worthy mission. At the Kage summit, one decision truly cemented the type of person Sasuke had become. Karen had been held captive by a weak Danzo who tried to use her as a bargaining chip in order to get away from Sasuke, but surprisingly, he much like Orochimaru showed that he didn't really care for the people who followed him. So instead of showing his new profound power, he had simply shown how weak he had become by nearly killing her in order to get to Danzo. So not surprisingly, Itachi's plan to turn Sasuke into a hero had failed, and he had simply created a vengeful monster and coward that was willing to kill even his own mother if it brought him closer to his goal. Now, the relationship between Sasuke and Naruto can be understood in another way. It can be compared to Naruto looking into a mirror, a parallel version of himself. All the choices he could have made, but chose not to. Rather than internalizing his pain and hatred, he reached out to the hands that reached out to him. And so, he shared his pain and insecurities, which Sasuke mistook for weakness. I have to be clear that whether or not Kishimoto had intended to convey such a message is something I don't really know, but this is just what I observed. Both characters had hidden monsters within them. Kurama was the literal monster within Naruto and the Sharingan was the key to the monster within Sasuke. But what separated these two characters was their approach. On many occasions, Naruto was tempted to give in to the Ninetales influence, but it was always thwarted by the people that surrounded him, unlike Sasuke's own case in which he was alone and only Kakashi, Naruto and Sakura tried to help him fight the temptation of falling into the hate the Sharingan fed on. Naruto is a perfect example of what happens when one successfully confronts the Shadow through a long life endeavor. He had more than enough reason to seek vengeance against the village, but instead chose to focus on building his various relationships. A gun ready to be fired, but he chose not to fire the gun, but rather keep it hoisted for the sake of his own sanity and the people he loved. Now one moment in the series stands out and proves my point. This incident occurs during the same time Obito had declared the start of the fourth great ninja war. When Naruto in an attempt to gain control of Kurama's power had to face his dark side or his shadow. This is a moment that showed us how even despite the way the villagers started to treat him after his battle with Nagato, a part of him still held malice for the village. His dark half describes it in this way. It was so painful, almost unbearable, and he even tells Naruto not to trust the people of the village. But it was Naruto's response that cemented his growth. The people of the village are important, but before I can trust them, there's someone else I have to trust. I'll try to trust myself to trust myself as the one the villagers put their faith in. Even despite facing his true feelings, he accepted that side of him and he acknowledged it, without any doubt in his heart about who he chose to become. Not who he was expected to become from necessity, but who he chose to become. Thanks to that part of him, he was able to become stronger. Thanks to that part, he managed to get that far and even accept Kurama. He accepted that it had always been part of him, and any power it might have held over him was lost. There was no need for him to be afraid of the hate Kurama had been feeding on, because he had become the willing monster, a dangerous man but also a loving and stronger person, quite the opposite of Sasuke, whose fate was not in his own hands. 
It can be said Naruto gazed long enough into the abyss. Hashirama when asked what a shinobi is by Sasuke responded with this. Shinobi are people who endure to achieve their goals, but depending on what they choose as their goal, they change like Madara and I. Itachi's main goal was to protect the village, but when given the choice to protect the village or protect his brother, he chose Sasuke. His goal had changed, and rather than being seen as a hero, he changed and took the role assigned to him as a monster and an object of hate for Sasuke. Which begs the question, was his desire to choose an illusion as well? It can be said that his love for his brother blinded him into a false conclusion of choice, when in reality it was all part of Danzo's plan, which would make his actions towards his brother that of a hypocrite, which can be symbolized by his gradual loss of sight, blinded by his own truth, and only able to see clearly after death, and capable of making the wise decision to love and trust his brother no matter what. After Itachi's death, Sasuke had to decide whether to continue on his destructive path or accept the truth and let it shape him into the person he secretly desired to become. A friend, brother, and father. Now truth is the property of being in accord with fact or reality. When Sasuke reanimates the four Hokages, he did it with the intention to understand and accept the truth, no matter how horrible it was. But as the Kages began to speak, he soon realized it was not what he expected. A huge part of him desired to find fault in all the decisions they made. Each Kage undoubtedly made the decision that led to the destruction of the Uchiha. Hashirama had been so blinded by his ideologies that he failed to face the real internal problems that the village had been facing. Tobirama had been blinded by events of the past and had further encouraged segregation against the Uchiha. And Hiruzen had acted like a coward and refused to act in a time when the village required him to make the hard decisions that the village needed, which resulted in the creation of Danzo. And of course, Minato had not valued his life sufficiently to keep him alive and protect the village. Rather than the rest of the Kage's words, this was all Sasuke needed to conclude that the Kage system was what caused all their problems. He chose to deny the truth that Itachi was an excellent shinobi who saved his village. Even though his decision was in the realm of, well, black and white, it's still something that, well, Itachi did for his village, out of love. And Sasuke denying it had sought to destroy all his brother's hard work. Sasuke had been given plenty of time to reach out to the hands that reached out to him. What was it that made him so hell-bent on the path of hatred? At some point, Itachi was no longer the reason, and it was just his hate for what the world was, not what it had done to him. Taking us back to the previous definition of hate, for Sasuke, hate was a way of life. He hated not because of what happened to him, but because it had become a necessity, and he knew nothing else. His well-meant intentions had become corrupt, as each time his goals changed, he also changed to the point that he was almost unrecognizable to his previous teammates and friends. Even when he had learned the truth, he still decided to act as though he had still been under Itachi's control. Through all this confusion, the only person who had been left to bring back the Sasuke of old was Naruto, because he was the only one who had resolved to putting up with his anger and even enticing him to lash out as much as he wanted to towards him. Now the tale of Sasuke brings to light an uncomfortable topic among us, which is the darkness within us and our unwillingness to face it. Hate is subjective, and no one is immune to it. The potential to destroy lies in all of us, but so does the power to conquer that destruction. When we let others in and reflect on the choices we make, we get closer to becoming the ideal people we desire to become. Conquering the shadow, as previously stated, is a lifelong endeavor. But each time we bring it into the light, we get closer to becoming better. In the final scenes of their battle, Sasuke had gained the courage to step out of the darkness he had called home for so long. Who he was after all this was not known. And I believe the reason he left the second time was to discover who he was without the goal to destroy Itachi. It was a journey to discover who he was without anyone's influence, not Orichimaru's, Obito, or Zetsu. The decision was finally given to him. As Naruto had to trust himself before he could trust the village and his friends, even Itachi had to trust himself. So he too had to learn to trust himself, and Sasuke now as Boruto's mentor has come so far as he is no longer driven by impulse or rage, but he is wiser and loving with true and great power. He had done the impossible and changed the fuel that the Sharingan survived on, from pain and hate to love, much like Shisui, Kagami, and Itachi. 